Many people will say that this is a large animal living in the desert, that it eats chickens, and if anything goes wrong, it might spit. Some species possess two humps, and some people think they have only one. It was once thought that they store water in those humps. Sometimes humans even compare themselves to camels when they have to shoulder too heavy a workload. Perhaps that is all the general public usually knows about camels. This video will take you into the world of these ships of the desert, discover why they live in the desert and whether this fascinating creature lives only there. Why do they have one or two humps? And there are many more interesting things we will explore about this marvellous animal right now. The evolutionary history of the camel dates back to the distant past. It is believed that the earliest ancestors of the modern camel appeared around 40 million years ago in North America, evolving from an ancient forerunner dwelling in tropical forests, the Protilopus. This was an extinct early ungulate. Some researchers classify them in the family Camelidae, and Protilopus is the oldest and smallest known ancient camel species. Over time, ancient camels grew larger, and although many species once appeared, unfortunately, none of them survived today. One of those species, the gigantic Procamelus, decided to cross the Bering Land Bridge into Asia, where they adapted to the region's diverse and harsh steppe environments. Some camels remained in Asia and became the Bactrian camel. Meanwhile, a branch pressed on for new adventures. Upon reaching Africa, they evolved into the one-humped dromedary camel, perfectly suited to the hot desert climate. Other close relatives, like the Guanaco and Vicuña, still exist today in South America, having taken a different route through the Isthmus of Panama into the Andes, where they continue to live. Later, humans introduced camels to Australia. The British brought them there in the 19th century to help explore the continent's arid and difficult interior. Over time, camels there repeated the history of horses on that land. The development of railroads and roads replaced camels in transportation. Many animals were then released. They moved freely, bred, and eventually established stable wild populations in Australia's desert regions. No predator in Australia is powerful enough to threaten a camel. Even dingoes stand little chance against these formidable animals. Within about a century, the feral camel population doubled each year. By the 2000s, there were roughly one million camels in Australia. Now, camels are causing significant environmental damage on that drifting continent. In some areas, they have destroyed up to 80% of the vegetation cover. During extreme droughts, wild camels can break fences, damage water machinery, and even destroy outhouses in their search for water. Australians are scratching their heads over what to do with these unwelcome royal guests. On other continents, the story is very different. About 3,000 years ago, humans domesticated both camel species, and since then, they have become invaluable allies in the harsh desert conditions. Wild camels nearly disappeared from nature. They went extinct in North America. In Eurasia, there remains only a small population of wild Bactrian camels, also called Camelus ferus, living in the Gobi Desert of Mongolia near the Chinese border. Curiously, in Africa today, only the domesticated dromedary survives. Wild dromedaries died out completely by the early common era. History remains silent on exactly how this happened. To this day, scientists and experts have yet to answer whether humans or the harsh environment played the larger role in the disappearance of wild camels. At one point, some researchers even hypothesized that the single-humped dromedary might actually be a human-engineered breed created by early herders crossing Bactrian and dromedary camels to produce fertile one-humped hybrids, with the theory being that during fetal development, the two humps would fuse into one. But this doesn't explain all the differences between dromedaries and Bactrians, which stem from their adaptation to very different terrains. Bactrian camels have stockier builds, shorter legs, and are covered in long, dense hair, adaptations not only to heat, but also to the severe cold of Central Asian deserts. In contrast, dromedaries are taller but not as heavy, with long legs and necks, shorter hair, 
and they do not inhabit regions with pronounced cold seasons. Dromedaries thrive in the hottest deserts. According to most experts, the wild ancestor of the dromedary once roamed the Arabian and Saharan deserts, but has since vanished from both the land and human memory. Nature seems to have struggled to tame the camel, not only because they are so large, but also due to their incredible strength. An adult camel can weigh up to 800 kilograms and stand over two meters tall. Among mammals still extant today, the camel's body is like a perfectly engineered machine. From a human perspective, the desert is certainly no place to live. Deserts come in many forms, but if an area is classified as a desert, there is no doubt about its extreme characteristics. Intense heat most of the year and very little water. Available water is also unevenly distributed. Vegetation is sparse and there is almost no shelter from the blazing sun or gusty winds. Extreme temperatures and the lack of moisture pose major challenges to all desert inhabitants, especially warm-blooded animals. Heat and hot air continuously pump enormous amounts of heat into the body. For a large, non-burrowing animal, the only way to avoid overheating is to constantly shed heat through evaporative cooling, i.e. sweating, using up the most precious resource. This problem would seem insurmountable. Yet through evolution, the camel succeeded in minimising both water consumption and heat gain. A camel's thick coat prevents hot air from reaching the skin. Insulation is enhanced by hollow hairs and an optimal layering of guard hairs and down. On the back, the area most exposed to the sun, insulation is further increased by fat deposits in the humps. Their nostrils have valves that open only when inhaling and exhaling, so as not to lose excess water. Camel's dung is very dry, and their urine is extremely concentrated thanks to a kidney system that retains as much water as possible. But passive measures alone aren't enough. Camels had to sacrifice something. Camels chose to sacrifice the stability of their body temperature. If a 1 degree Celsius fluctuation from 37 degrees Celsius is a sign of serious illness in humans, a camel's body temperature can range from 34 to 41 degrees Celsius. Only when it exceeds the upper limit do sweat glands activate to remove dangerous heat. Not only can camels conserve water, they can store enormous amounts of it. During long journeys across arid land, a camel may lose up to 25% of its body weight from dehydration without harm to its health or mental state. In extreme cases, a camel can survive losing up to 40% of its weight, while most mammals die after losing 15 to 20% of their water. In typical mammals, dehydration primarily affects plasma, making the blood more viscous, which strains the heart and leads to pathology and death. In camels, even after substantial water loss, blood viscosity hardly increases. Other tissues sacrifice water so that blood plasma remains available as a reserve for the most severe conditions. But when a camel finally reaches water, its capacity astonishes us. In just 10 minutes, one can drink up to 130 litres. In most animals, even perfect osmoregulatory mechanisms would be overwhelmed by such a rapid influx, causing cell rupture and death. Yet camels do not suffer this fate. Their red blood cells can swell up to 2.5 times their original volume after rehydration. This is the key difference between camels and other mammals. Camel plasma also contains a high concentration of proteins, especially albumin, that helps regulate body water, including blood volume. Maintaining minimal blood fluidity is essential for surviving in a water-scarce environment. Camel red blood cells are not the biconcave discs found in most mammals, but are elongated, coconut-shaped cells. This structure endures large osmotic pressure changes. Another adaptation to water scarcity is their gait. Camels move slowly, but very energy efficiently. 
allowing them to travel up to 90 kilometers per day between grazing areas and water sources. High temperatures and water scarcity are not the only challenges in the desert. Limited soil moisture restricts plant productivity and creates distinct seasons. In spring, deserts burst into bloom and greenery, but in less than a month, most plants shrivel to dry stalks or cacti that are hard to reach. Here, the camel's famous humps show their value. Almost entirely made of fat, the humps store energy during times of plenty and serve as a fallback when food is scarce, provided at least one hump retains enough fat. As long as some reserve remains, the camel stays healthy. The camel's complex four-chambered stomach hosts a diverse community of symbiotic microbes that ferment cellulose, like other ruminants renowned for processing low-nutrient fodder. In times of famine or food absence, camels still have backup reserves. The famous humps contain fat nearly pure. During abundance it accumulates, and during scarcity it is metabolized. Camels remain strong and capable of long survival without water or fresh forage. Another vital trait is keen senses. Excellent eyesight enables camels to spot a personal predator from kilometers away, and their acute sense of smell can locate water sources from 40 to 50 kilometers off. Deserts feature shifting sands and varied terrain. While camels can walk easily over hard flats like tarsiers, they handle soft sands by spreading their broad, two-toed feet. Any ground exposed to the midday sun can burn bare skin, but camels have a unique solution. Their feet have two toes with thick, leathery pads instead of traditional hooves. When they step, the pads flatten to prevent sinking into sand. Similar pads cover the elbows, knees, and other parts that contact hot sand or rock. These traits are shared by both Bactrian and Dromedary camels. However, besides surviving arid heat, Bactrians face frigid winters that dromedaries never encounter. In Central Asia and the Gobi Desert, temperatures can plunge below minus 40 Celsius dollars in winter. Thus, even Bactrian's summer coat is longer and denser than dromedaries. In winter, they grow a true woolen overcoat. The average length of winter hair is about seven centimeters, and on the humps or under the neck, individual tufts can reach 30 centimeters. By spring, they shed in patches, leaving a ragged appearance. As we know, the wild ancestors of these perfect desert dwellers no longer exist today. Therefore, the conservation of this evolutionary masterpiece now rests entirely with humans. A whole industry, camel husbandry, has grown around breeding and using camels, especially in Arab and Islamic countries with large desert or semi-desert areas. These nations, mainly in North Africa and the Middle East, raise primarily dromedaries suited to extreme heat. The global camel population today is about 20 million, half of which are in North Africa and the Middle East. Dromedaries are also kept in Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, India, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. Bactrian camels are bred in Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Mongolia, and China. In Russia, in Astrakhan, Yakutia, Orenburg, Chelyabinsk, Kamchatka, and Tuva, they keep three Bactrian breeds, Kazakh, Mongolian, and Turkmen. They also breed heavier hybrids called Arvana dromedaries. Camel breeders long ago discovered that first-generation hybrids can display superior traits, including economic ones, compared to both parent breeds. This phenomenon, called heterosis, yields F1 and subsequent hybrids under various names like Nar, Inner, Sabi and Cosp. When people think of camels, they often recall their famous spitting habit. But surprisingly, camels do not spit as much as commonly believed. They mainly spit in self-defense to protect calves from predators or during the mating season. If someone experiences a spit attack, it does not diminish the camel's reputation as an extremely useful animal, especially in the world's arid deserts. 
Camels have long served as transport animals. Their ability to carry heavy loads and traverse long distances without water made them the first choice for caravan travellers and trade routes. Camel hides are used for high-quality goods like sandals, bags and rugs. Bactrian camel wool, soft and warm, is prized for clothing and fine textiles. It insulates exceptionally well, especially during cold desert nights. Camel meat is an important food source for many desert-dwelling peoples. Camel milk has unique properties containing a natural antibiotic called lactoferrin, which keeps it from spoiling for extended periods. Its immunoglobulins fight fungi and viruses, boosting human immunity. This has attracted great scientific interest. Camels possess a robust immune system and do not contract many diseases that kill other mammals. They produce primitive antibodies that offer potential for laboratory synthesis. Scientists believe these antibodies may soon be used to combat most human cold viruses. In many cultures, camels hold great social and cultural significance. They symbolise resilience and adaptability and feature in traditional festivals. In some regions, camel husbandry is a vital part of the economy, providing income and employment for local communities. Camel imagery appears on coats of arms and flags in some cities and regions. Camels symbolise power and nobility in parts of Asia and the Arab world. Today, the wild camel appears on the state emblem and flag of Zabaikalsk. The emblem of Eritrea also features a camel, and curiously, the coat of arms of the Polish city of Pilsno includes a camel, an odd choice in Europe. Legend has it that after the Battle of Grunwald in 1410, King Vladislav II Jagiełło honoured Pilsno's soldiers for their service by granting them a camel. Mountains and hills are often named after camels when their ridge lines resemble a reclining camel with one or two humps. For example, Camel Peak is the northwestmost volcano of the Piagoska range. The camel is one of the most extraordinary and versatile animals on the planet. They have enabled humans to survive and thrive in some of the harshest environments on Earth. Their importance cannot be overstated and our respect for these marvellous creatures must include recognition of their immense contributions to human culture and survival. Ships of the Desert is the poetic name people gave to these wondrous beings. They truly glide over vast sands like sails on the sea. Although civilization has advanced and the world around us has grown busy, with camels, nothing has changed in thousands of years as they continue their eternal journey across the sands. What are your impressions of this fascinating animal? Leave your thoughts in the comments below.